Hi, I'm Keith Williams, the 2003 Jeopardy! College Champion, and I'm glad to have you back for the second installment of How to Calculate the Final Wager. In our first installment, I showed you that optimal game theory suggests the player in the lead always wagered a tie. But there are some circumstances in which he has to wager for a tie. Let's look at an example. Here we have Nicole in the lead with 17,200 and Paula in second with 8,600. Sandeep, with a negative score, will not be around for Final Jeopardy. Let's recall the rules from part one. Rule number one is the leader always wagers to win. If Paula doubles her score, she'll have 17,200. This is already Nicole's total, so to guarantee a tie, she can wager no more than zero. Rule number two is the trailer positions himself to win if the leader gets it wrong. If Nicole gets it wrong, she'll still have 17,200, so Paula needs to wager at least 8,600 to match this total. Notice a few things here. You can't wager less than zero, so because zero is the most Nicole can wager, it's what she has to wager. Similarly for Paula, you can't wager more than you have, so since Paula's minimum and maximum are both 8,600, this is the only rational wager. Let's see what actually happened. Paula got it right and wagered everything, pulling into a tie with Nicole. But for some reason, Nicole wagered 5,000 and finished in second with her incorrect response. Now that scenario was fairly obvious, but still, a player messed it up and cost herself a large paycheck and the chance to play again. You see, it pays to know this stuff. Now let's look at another scenario. In this game, Aaron is in the lead with 21,600. Roseanne has 14,400, and Sarah has 8,400. For now, let's focus on just Aaron and Roseanne. If Roseanne doubles her score, she'll have 28,800. To match or beat this total, Aaron must wager at least 7,200. Now for Roseanne. If Aaron wages properly and gets it wrong, the most he can have is 14,400, which you'll see is Roseanne's total. So Roseanne can wager no more than zero. Let's move on to rule number three and we'll look only at Aaron. If Roseanne stands pat, Aaron will need to stay at or above 14,400, which he can do by wagering at most 7,200. Look at this situation. Aaron can wager no less than 7,200 and no more than 7,200. So this means he has to wager that amount. Similar to our first scenario, Roseanne can wager no less than her maximum of zero. So she must wager zero. Based on our first three rules, both Roseanne and Aaron are forced to wager specific amounts. This leads to a new rule, rule number four. Knowing that your opponent has to wager a specific amount is a great piece of information. You can use it to add restrictions to your own wager, or in some cases it will present additional opportunities. Usually tie situations are godsends for the trailer. Let's dig a little deeper into this one. Knowing that Aaron has to wager 7200, Roseanne sees that if she wagers everything and gets it right, she'll finish in a tie for the win. So in addition to wagering zero, she is justified in wagering everything. So if you're the trailer in this situation, how do you decide whether to bet zero or everything? There are a number of factors. How confident are you in the category? Do you think the other player is going to wager optimally? Is the third player a factor? Notice that the third player, Sarah, has more than half of Roseanne's total, so the zero wager isn't a good option for Roseanne. She should wager everything. In the real game, Roseanne wagered 2,401, trying to lock out Sarah, while Aaron won with a correct response and a wager of 7,200. Good on Aaron for recognizing that that was a tie situation. He did the math and wagered appropriately. Now let's look at one more example. Here we have Katie leading with 17,600, June in second with 13,200, and Lee in third with 5,600. Let's look at Katie and June. To stay above June's total should he double up, Katie needs to wager at least 8,800. If Katie gets it wrong, she'll have 8,800. So to stay at or above this, June can wager no more than 4,400. Now on to rule number three and we'll look at June. If Katie stands pat, 
she'll have 17,600. To match this, June needs to wager at least 4,400. Look at June's situation. His minimum and maximum are the same, which means he has to wager 4,400. Let's consider rule number four. Knowing that June will wager 4,400, Katie sees that if he gets it wrong, he'll have 8,800. To stay above this, Katie can wager no more than 8,800. Based on our first four rules, she too is forced to wager a specific amount, 8,800. Now let's consider the corollary to rule number four, that there might be other options. For Katie, if June wagers 4,400 and gets it right, he'll have Katie's total. So Katie might be justified in wagering zero. For June, if Katie wagers exactly 8,800 and gets it right, she'll have twice June's score. So June might be justified in wagering everything. What the players do is based on a number of factors, particularly what they think the other will do. In the actual game, June got it right and wagered 4,400, as we hoped. Katie got it right too and wagered 8,801. If they'd both gotten the question wrong, this would have cost her big time. These situations all have one math trick in common. Let's look at Nicole's and Paula's scores as a ratio. 8,600 divided by 17,200 is equal to 1 over 2. Paula has half of Nicole's score, or Nicole has twice Paula's score. In our second scenario, 14,400 divided by 21,600 is 2 over 3. Roseanne has exactly two-thirds Aaron's score. Finally, for Katie and June, their scores are in the proportion 3 over 4. Now you can recognize these proportions immediately, or you can do the calculations and figure them out the long way. Either works just fine. Now, a reminder. Our new rule number four says that if your opponent is forced to wager a specific amount, you should revisit your calculations to take this into account. A corollary of this is that there might be other options for your wager, although this depends on a number of factors. If two players' scores form a ratio of exactly one half, two thirds, or three quarters, both players want to wager to tie. And one other thing. If you're tied with another player going into final, you have only two options against that player. Everything or nothing. That's it for part two. In part three, we'll add back in the third player, kicking things up a notch to calculate the final wager. We'll see you then.